Hey everyone, welcome back to Jay's Garage. I thought I'd do a quick update as to what we've been doing lately. So in the last video we left off, we were going to build a 350 TBI engine following the last video. Unfortunately, we started to film building that engine and the person who the engine belonged to was borrowing a vehicle that got written off. So we came in one night and we finished the engine off. And we did everything. We put the engine together, put the accessories on, and we sent it to a different city to be installed the next day. And I apologize because we didn't get footage of it. I have a couple pictures, but we really didn't even get many of those. The whole situation changed, and unfortunately, um, I promised you guys a build, and it didn't happen. We do have other engines coming, and I will do a complete build or whatever it is people want to see if there's a particular thing people want to see we can do that as well we have a mopar coming we have an ls coming we have a small yeah the mopar is a small block 360. we have a 350 vortex build hydraulic roller some head work we have a bunch of things coming so again i apologize and i'll post some the very few pictures i have On the upside, the engine is running, and it's running well. Okay, so one of the problems I have here is I have this 1998 GMC Sonoma. Actually, it's a partial 1998 GMC Sonoma. I have the whole truck. It's just not in the garage at the time. And what's happened here is it was a four-cylinder automatic truck, which I decided to do a 5.3 swap. Seeing that the LS swaps are so popular, and they do come from a performance background, I wanted to give it a try. Now, it's not really a major thing on my list to accomplish right now, but being that we're in winter in Saskatchewan, I have a single vehicle driveway, except for the back of the garage door, I can put two vehicles. And with the frame sitting out there, and the parts truck, and the box off of this truck, I can't get anything else in here to do any repairs. Um, and it's, well, ob obviously, with the cab in here, it's not very far away from the, uh, frame of the S10. I only have about 23 feet of length, so you won't get a regular vehicle in here, so the cab has got to go. The reason we pulled the cab off of this truck is when we were fitting the engine, we were having oil pan to cross member clearance issues. And we were stuck against the tunnel, um, the transmission tunnel of the cab. So what I wanted to do was undo the mount bolts just so I can lift the cab a couple inches and slide the engine in and figure out how much the cross member I wanted to trim. Unfortunately, the bolts broke off and I discovered later that all my body bushings were bad and that was a major problem. This was just supposed to be a simple, easy, LS swap. What we're going to do is I'll show you real quick what I have here. I have the frame. Um, what we're going to do is we decided instead of if you if you research some of the LS swaps, so let me just start with this. We're starting with the 5.3 L33. I've just unbagged and uncovered the engine. I had it bagged and covered for quite for a bit here, but last night I wanted to get it unbagged. Basically, I want to get the transmission off the bell housing. I want to clean up the transmission. The transmission is a 4L60. I know nothing about it. I took the pan off and it looked really good. So I'm going to clean it up and put it back on as well. I'm going to install a high stall with torque converter. I still have to put in the flex plate and starter and all that. The engine's fresh and ready to go. Just 799 heads, flat top piston, 5.3 HO from a 2005 Chevy 4x4. It utilizes a couple things. So when you're doing these swaps, just so you know, you just do the easy stuff first, and the rest of the stuff will get you later. It has a muscle car oil pan. Now, several people suggest with that oil pan is the reason for the clearance on the cross member of this S10, but it really isn't. It has dirty dingle motor mounts. And basically, they're a one-piece mount that's been cut and, and bent, but they slide. They look good. I like them, they're functional. When I started to 
think about doing this swap, there's a lot of things here to consider. You can buy a cross member, you can buy a high mount air conditioning unit, you can buy headers, you can buy mounts, you can buy an oil pan, all through hallway. They have a whole system now you can buy. I chose not to go that way. I, I, I like the mounts. I didn't want a big tube header. They offer one and three quarter and one seven eighths. I really wanted a one five eighths header for a five three. Mainly because we're not at sea level or below. We have a little bit of elevation here where I'm at. So I chose some Hedman Hustler. They're one and five eighths with a three inch collector. And they're a mid length. They're actually a nice header. Here's the part number right here. I think they're four five two four zero. I think they'll work really good on a five three. We went that route with those mounts, that pan, and these headers. And actually, for the most part, everything fit really well. We had to do a little bit of trimming on this upper A-arm for the header. But other than that, it's your standard air conditioning notch. And we're going to finish the cross member notch. The cross member notch isn't really that important. The oil pan did fit without it being notched, albeit it was very tight. Why the notch is so I can put the engine and tranny in at once without having to lift the cab up. And if I want to pull the engine out without pulling the transmission, I can do that as well. It just makes it easier to work on more than anything. The holy pan is about an inch, or slightly more than an inch, shorter than the muscle car pan. This one hangs down about 5 eighths of an inch underneath the cross member. I'm not too concerned about it. So when you're doing one of these swaps, if you ever are or interested in doing one, there's a ton of information out there. And you just want to use the parts that best suit your needs. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the cab on, hopefully the fuel tank in with fuel lines run, and the box back on. Then I can utilize my garage again. I can bring in some projects. I have some repairs I want to do. And I'll be able to start doing those again once this cab and this frame are out here. I didn't ever plan on putting this project on, on a video because, well, it's over halfway through. I've test fitted some stuff. I just have some welding and some assembly to do. And I wasn't sure if there'd be any interest. One of the reasons I picked this project is I do a lot of engines, but I don't do a lot of welding, I don't do a lot of wiring, and I don't do a lot of small modifications and it's something I just wanted to do and get good at or or learn and uh, be more proficient at. So that was kind of the basis behind the vehicle. It's not a race truck, it's far from it. It's, it's just going to be a peppy daily driver that gets good mileage. I want the air conditioning to work, no check engine lights, no ABS lights. I want the cruise to work, you know, the basic stuff. I don't know if I'm going to use HB tuners or Holly Terminator X, or I actually have contemplated just using a carburetor for this year just to get the truck sorted out. But I'll figure that out in the next couple weeks. Anyway, if you'd like to follow along or you want any more information on this, let me know. Just uh, before I go, with the headers, I have built an exhaust system. I built some hangers back here. The hold set exhaust system and I'm going to do tailpipes. It's going to be a two and a half inch exhaust. It's going to be a 5.3 with the 36 pound injectors with a T with the Trailblazer SS intake. It's like I say it'll have full tailpipes. It's just going to be a driver. So if you're interested in something like this, like I say, follow along. If there's something in particular you want to see, let me know. And again, once this vehicle is out of my garage, we'll be able to roll in some other stuff and projects along the way. I would, however, like to get this done. It's been about a year and a half in the making. Um, I even have a thread on a S10 forum if you want to see what the vehicle looked like to start. And if you, uh, again, have any questions, have any interest, or have something that you want to see in particular, let me know, and I'll try and accommodate you. Thanks a lot, and thanks for watching, and I'll update you soon.